All right, gang, today we're starting up the work on clip flow. So I don't know if you, if you saw the last video with Daryl and I talking about the problem. Today I'm gonna to start building out the application. So we're gonna be using Rails for this one. I'm gonna try using view components or either view components or flex. Just as a different way, you know, I wanna I want to learn something new every time I build a project. So I'm gonna try that. We're gonna use TipTap for a rich text editor because we wanna kind of replicate that notion feel. And what else are we gonna do in here? I think that's pretty much it. We're gonna use Tailwind for styling. We're gonna start building out a few components and giving it a give this spin. So let's jump in. So what are we building? We are building Clipflow. This is our working title. So what is it? Content planning for YouTube creators. So basically the key concepts here or the key feature is the ability to come up with an idea for a video like one building a website called Clipflow and then working through that, filming it and then getting it edited, getting the thumbnail made and then publishing it and creating a schedule so that you can um, plan out your content. And this is for creators, so people who make money making videos on YouTube specifically. So we are focusing on that. And this is the landing page. So this is something we will build out eventually. We're just, this is still just a work in progress. Um, but as soon as that's done, that'll be part of this, this project here and we'll show you how we set it up. It's very simple. So that's cool. Um, and then from there, we're gonna use uh, TipTap for inline editing. So for this, we were, we were evaluating um, the tricks editor or action text, but we want the ability to output markdown um, for screen readers, etc. cetera. Um, and then just also that familiar, familiarity that people have with Notion. We want to replicate that. Uh, and this is all open source. So we can drop that in. We can use the vanilla JS uh, instead of the React one. And then the other things we'll use is, I want to use uh, view components. So it's either, either this or we're going to use flex. Um, so these are the two ones that are kind of competing at the moment. Uh, the view component, which I like the structure where you can have the stimulus controller next to the file, which I imagine you can still do with Flex as well. But this is the, the way to build, I guess, partials and, and things like that, but with a bit of logic in them. Uh, and they're very easy to test, all right, and super fast. And then you have Flex here, which is you write things like a bit, a little bit for me, probably a little bit harder to read. Um, but you know, we can have a look at, at what that looks like. Hopefully this, this is what it gets transpiled into. So yeah, we'll, we'll evaluate those guys and have a look at that. And then, yeah, we're going to build out. Uh, so our initial designs, we have just very, very early. Um, these are just basically, we've just chucked things, chucking things on a page, building out a dashboard, probably all in dark mode because it is built for YouTube and streaming. So we'll keep everything dark. Um, and that's cool because we've never done a full dark mode app standalone. So we'll, we'll do that. So let's get started with it and create our Rails project. So let's grab our snippet to run this. To get started, I'm in my code folder. We're going to run Rails new Clipflow. That's the name of the app. We're going to use Postgres for the database. We're going to skip tests because we can add aspect later. We're going to use ES build for the JavaScript and we're going to use Tailwind for CSS. All right, so let's just run that. Let us do its thing. Okay, so now it's all installed. We're going to just jump into that directory. So we're going to go CD and then that's going to be called Clipflow. And then we're going to go code dot jump into that. All right, what do we have? Now, always before I start, let's just do a... This is a key piece, and I made a big error in my last videos. We would not, we don't want to run Rails S like normal. We want to run bin dev because that's going to boot up the Tailwind compiler. It's going to boot up ES build for us. It'll compile our JavaScript, and it's going to boot up the Rails server. All right, that's very important. I sat there like an absolute noodle, and it wasn't working, and I was wondering why nothing was working, and that is why. Uh, all right, so. Can't find the database. That makes sense. So we'll cancel this and then we're going to go Rails DB create. 
all right sick so what that's done is it's created the development db and it's created the test db now we can run that bin dev again and let's see what happens there we are we're running rails 7.1.3 and on ruby 322 all right there we go once we've initialized our rails app i like to just commit this code just because the initial commit here when we make changes will be easier to see what we've done all right so we're just going to go initial commit here save that there we go so got our initial commit now saved everything away and now when we make changes we can see clearly what we've done so i'll just move this here all right so the first thing that we want to talk about today is our database modeling so i like to set up like the modeling so we can scaffold off on top of that okay so inside of notion we've set up basically our models which we discussed in the last video but the key piece this needs a better name the piece of content so that is your video right so that's the actual end state edited video that's the piece of content now a piece of content like you can see here has many items or ideas so you can collect a bunch of i mean we could refer to this as a content group in as a model would probably be i mean if you refer to each item as a con piece of content and then a content group i don't know if i like it because in the end of the day you're producing one piece of content so we need to think about what that model is called it has many ideas so you can create like before that piece here you have a piece called an idea right so that's that would be a clip or like a piece of again that's again a piece of content so it's a I, I, we could even do something like where you have a content and it's the parent and then you have multi it can have many sub content pieces of sub content that might be the way that we have to look at this because i think that that makes sense because you could have like for instance you could have a piece of content which is a a url to a meme that you're going to use in your video or you have a url to another video that you're going to reference in your video so if you're doing a reaction so you need that and then you can take those pieces and you're going to create a single piece of content which will be a parent content or a group of of items or ideas so then we're going to have channels so channels is quite a simple one so it's just an organization has many channels so this belongs to an organization right and then we're going to have statuses which is important now this this might need to be editable so it, it, usually i create a statuses table that's kind of global but because this is unique to a creator, they may have different statuses that they want to run their content through. They may want to have fewer or more. So we don't want to rest, um, be too restrictive here. So I think it's something that will be different. It will actually belong to an organization this time, um, which I usually don't do. So we'll end up having duplicates because many people could have you know, uh, approved or edited. But that doesn't really matter in this instance. Automation, that's more of a concept than a model. And then we're going to have an organization, which is the, your team. And then you're going to have an organization user and a user, right? So users, so we're going to need authentication. So we will have to look at this. And then we're going to have organization. So the first model that we can probably set up quite simple is the organization. So that's the base. You know, everything will stem from there. Uh, and then from there, we can build out channels and we can build out users in this organization user on this is a join table joining the um the user in the organization and on that join table we can have flags as you're the owner of the organization you're an admin or you're just a user so that would just be un, un i guess unchecked both of these two and that way we can create like um, permissions within an organ like what can you do um, on the organization and then within the organization a user would have a role so the role could probably live, you know, you could be a host, writer, producer, editor, etc. And you may have different roles between different organizations. All right, so let's have a look at setting up the organizations table. All right, so I'm actually going to just backtrack here. Instead of adding organization first, what I want to do is, because the first thing we're building here is this landing page, I actually want to be able to make the subscribe button, create a user in the platform automatically so that when we do launch they do have an account already they don't have to go like uh, get an email create your account we've already got you an account you just need to confirm that 
All right, so let's do that. So we're gonna do the same thing we've done in, in previous videos. We're gonna use authentication zero here. So it's in the construction manager that which walks through all the features. I'm just gonna do this real quick. We're gonna just put that gem in, we're gonna run it and get our auth going. So the gem I'm talking about here is um, authentication zero, right? So this is very, useful gem it basically just scaffolds out everything we need for authentication and once that's done you can just remove the gem so to install all we're going to do is going to run bundle add authentication zero it's going to grab the gem put it in our bundle all right and then all we need to do is run bundle or oh, rails g authentication so rails g authentication yeah and hit go that's done its thing. So it just created a whole bunch of views for us. It's created some migrations, a users table and a sessions table. And then it's uncommented bcrypt. So if we jump into our gem file here, we can see what it's done. Um, let's just check for bcrypt. So we got it there and there. So I can get rid of this because we already got that. Authentication zero has been added there. And then it's gone through when we ran the generator, it's gone and created all of our different controllers. It's created our models, etc. But I've done a full video on this before, which you can jump back and have a look at. We won't be covering that today. All we need to do now is go into our users migration here. So you can see it comes with an email and a password digest. If we want anything else on here, we can add it in now. So what I will do here is a name. All right, we don't need to index that name. I don't know why Copilot's saying that. We actually don't need any of this. Um, null false, I guess. Yeah, we can't have a false. So that's the user. So that's all good. We can probably, along with that, we could probably create the role table, but we can add that in later, so that's easy enough. And this is just to check if the users verified themselves via email. So that's there, and the sessions table is for each user every time they log in it creates a session that we can keep track of here all right so let's jump into here and we're going to just run rails db migrate now to actually set up that table in our database cool so that's done all right so now what i'll do is i'll commit this code and this will be uh set up auth yeah if we have a look inside here, sorry, now that we've got this set up, you can see that it's created a home controller and an index route on that. So if we run bin dev again here and then jump into our application, it'll now redirect to the login, right? Because I believe the home page is neat, requires authentication. You can see here, before action, it's got authenticate, right? So now every time any, any route that runs, it's going to always call authenticate. And if we're not authenticate, it's going to redirect to sign in path. But we want to, for this home controller, we want to actually skip before action, right? On the index route of this. So it's just called authenticate, not authenticate user. And we can basically say anything on the home controller for now, we're going to skip. So if we rerun this now at the root, so we got no index, so this is looking, so obviously our home page, if we jump into our view, it's referencing something. See, so this is like, this is actually the the user's home, like basically the account screen. So what we could do, I mean, realistically, we don't need this. So what I'm gonna say here is, I would make this probably, I'd, I'd have this under a user's page. I wouldn't have this under this home screen here. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna say, uh, I mean, I don't want to do this right now because it's going to break when we scaffold. But what we can do here, I'm just going to put this here. And I'm just going to say home for now. And now if we refresh, there we go. So we've got our home screen. So this will be when you're landing on this app for the first time, it'll be our landing screen. So it's basically the marketing um, the page and it will be this. This is what we're going to try and build out here, right? So that's now the home screen. So, and the reason I want the user model there is so that when we hit subscribe, we then create that user inside of our DB and then they're ready to go when we're ready to launch. All right, so next up, um, let's just quickly run the scaffolding for users. So if you've seen in the past, we do here, we go Rails G scaffold controller. And we're just gonna say user. 
all right so that's now going to generate the users controller here so <clears throat> if we have a look in our thing here if we go users this should throw oh wait we need to actually start the server yeah we should see it's going to throw us straight to sign in because we need to sign in okay so we can create the sign up stuff later but that's now protected so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put in the users i'm going to create a view in users and i'm just going to create one called account dot html dot erb right and then i'm just going to grab the stuff that we had there and i'm just going to store it for later i don't need that right now but i just want to store that okay so that's the user's account screen so when we're logged in as a user we can see who we are signed in as and what how to change our password and change our email and log out etc all right so let's now start working on styling this landing page one thing that i might actually do as well um that's been generated automatically instead of being called home i think i'm going to call this marketing right because i think it kind of makes more sense because this is we're going to use this for marketing this is like the unauthenticated um piece and then so we just need to rename this to marketing as well and then we need to fix up the route so if we go routes now we should have here so it's marketing index that's our route Okay, I'm going to move that to the top here. I like to move these things down. So I'll just write here auth, auth. Uh, and then here we're going to have users. I like to do that just to make it cleaner. Um, and we can get rid of this here, okay? Just to tidy up our routes page a little bit. Now we should have, if we go here, we're home, okay? So now it's just lived on the marketing controller and for me it just feels a bit better. All right, so if we have a look at our landing page here in Figma, the first piece we want to do is looks like a pure black background or close to close enough to black. Um, yeah, it's pure black there. So then what we want to do is set that. What we probably want to do as well is have a layout that's specific to marketing. So we're going to have an application layout, which is, is more for, I guess, like the, the actual app itself. So that'll be quite different to our marketing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a special marketing um, layout over here and it's going to be a duplicate of this right so we have that available but then in here we can apply classes and stuff so what we can do here is we can say class and then we're going to just do bg i believe that's it let's see there we go cool i know something i know how to do basic html um and then all our code will be injected in there we just want this black background for all of this kind of content and then we can work a way around that so the the first piece i think that we're going to implement here is this header all right so let's jump in and do that so inside of our marketing view folder what we're going to do here is we're going to just have a header and that's a that is technically a partial that will live across multiple pages but at the moment it's just for the marketing header so we'll leave that here in this folder but as you grow and build you can pull it out into a common uh, piece of file so let's look at here so we're going to create a header right and then inside of that we're going to have a logo on that side and a button on this side now and we're still undecided about this button because we might move to an input like this so realistically i don't know what that button's going to do if it's going to do anything at all um, just yet so we might just put in the logo up here so I might we'll grab that in a second and that'll be an SVG Wait, I wonder if we can just grab the straight SVG from here if we grab the SVG see there's that the logo and we can work from there okay so I've exported that from Figma I'm just gonna drag it into the images folder and I'm gonna rename it now I mean we could even realistically drop this straight in to the code if we wanted to but i'm just going to do this for just here all right so we save that out and now what we want to do here is we want to um, go image tag and this is going to be logo let's see if i know what i'm talking about probably not 
Oh, uh, yep, that's not going to work because we actually need to include it into our marketing page, right? So let's just set this up like this in the main. And then in here, we're going to render partial. And this is going to be uh, so marketing slash header. Not passing any locals in right now. There we go. So there's our logo. All right. So that's cool. From here, we've got about 40 pixels padding in the header. So let's just see what that translates to. Um, 40 pixels is about P10. All right, so we're going to go here in the header. We're going to chuck on class P10. Let's check that out. Boom. All right, great. So before I go anywhere further, rather than keep clicking refresh, I'm going to add this gem here, uh, Rails Live Reload, just so that we can get those live reloads going. So in the development one, we're going to just chuck that there. In the gem file, and then I'm just going to re-bundle here to install it. And then we run bin dev. All right. Now if I chuck this here, and let's just see if we make changes. Let me make the screen a bit smaller as well. Just make sure my head isn't in the way. But if I pull that a bit here just for now quickly. And then if we jump into our marketing page and then just go under here and just go test. Oh, you won't be able to see this because let's just add in some a div here with a class of text white. It did reload, but that's there it is. There we go. All right, so now it's live reloading. All right, so that's a handy little gem. Okay, so I'm going to build it in, I guess, more of a mobile view here, just so I guess it's easier to see that way. All right, so we've added the logo. Now we just need to see what else we have to do here in Figma. And Figma, of course, let's pull Clipflow into its own window there. And then we can have Figma here. All right, so let's see. So the next piece, so we've got our header. I'm going to leave that button. The next piece is this kind of this hero section, all right? So let's do that. So we're going to create a new section here. We're going to go hero. All right, and this will be a section. And then the first piece is, yeah, we're going to have a content container. We are actually going to do that. So the section will span all the way. And then we're going to have here inside here, we're going to have a container. All right, so this is content. And then up here, I'm going to just say class equals text white, just so we can see stuff while we're trying to work. And now what we want to do here is we want to have the size. So in mobile, this thing will spread the width will be the entire width, so it'll be width full. So it's W full in mobile. But then when we get bigger, as we grow, we kind of want to limit this width. What is this width set to? It's set to 580. So the maximum width we want to ever allow is 580. So then from there it goes, we need to just have a look here in Tailwind width, uh, max width. I guess we can go max width. 580 so it's, there we go max w xl right so and that's on let's see what that does let's see what this does see if it works for us so it looks fine there we also need to center it though okay so what we're going to do here is we're going to say flex and we're going to say items center it's actually justify center yep that's right this needs to be w full and then we just need to make sure that our container let's just see what's actually going on here okay so again can being a donk we've got to render the partial here and this is the hero yeah Okay, there we go. Now we got that. 
and as we grow, it stays in the center, okay? And I guess we could make this even clearer if we just applied um, BG, let's just go gray. Is that the right one? No, let's go BG white. There we go. So now we can see, so that's what it looks like in mobile, then as we grow out, it kind of just stays there, yeah? That's what we're after. Get rid of this one. Okay. So the next piece is looking at this guy. So this is our public sans bold 58. That's our H1. All right. So we're going to add in the H1 here. All right. And we're going to chuck in our tagline. So we'll just fix this. All right. So that's not exactly right, but that's font size 58. So what is Tailwind saying for us? Font size 58 would be either we can go text five here or we can go text six XL. So let's try that. Six XL. So that's probably a bit big. Yep, and we want a text center. Yep. Um, content planning. Let's just see what that looks like. So that line height's been increased to a 120%. So let's see what line height has here. Uh, line height. Here we go. So leading tight. Let's see what that looks like. That's a bit better. So if we undo that change, you can see there. All right, content planning for YouTube creators. Now we do need our, our custom font, but we can add that in later. We're just gonna smash out the framework here. So the next piece is these guys, which is the features, right? So we're gonna have multiple features here. So it goes under here. We're gonna have div class. That'll just be the holder of those features if we want to move them all together. And they're kind of like a list. They're almost like a UL, but they've got a special icon. So I'm not going to play around with that too much. Okay. So first things first, let's grab just this and just put this in here. Okay. And then what we're going to do, so the font is 16 and the fills this kind of light gray. So let's see what we got here. Color. And uh, typography. Let's look at a text gray 300. You can actually apply that to all of the thing there. And this will be flex, flex coal. And then we can do gap two. Yeah. And just see what that feels like. Okay, so we need to center all that content as well. Uh, so that'll be item center. Yep. Uh, and then we can give a gap to this whole thing here as well. So that's in, this is all in this div. So I guess we can do flex, flex, coal here as well. And then we can go gap four. So probably needs a bit more than that. That's getting getting closer. Um, all right, so let's just go bang, bang, bang. Sweet. And then we're gonna work through these. Chuck this in. All right. Okay. There we go. So there's a bit of a bigger gap here. Let's make that eight. Even 12 might be right. Okay. I'm gonna also just chuck inspect here and turn it into mobile view. So we can see what that looks like. So what we can see here is we might even on make this only for large. We go text X five XL or even medium. And then here for normal, we probably drop this down to like four. That probably reads better for mobile. 
Um, same thing here. We want to put padding on this. I reckon we go padding X of eight just to pull that in. Can you see how I've just pulled that in there? Um, and then again, probably centering that content as well. So we want to go text center. All right. So that doesn't look ideal just with that, those breaks there. Um, so we might have to look at how that looks on, in, in mobile because it looks a bit funny. But what we can do here is we can grab, oh, these are fun, awesome icons, I think. So I might have to just grab those as SVGs for now, okay? Then the next piece under here, again, we're gonna have flex, flex coal. Okay, and then this is this kind of, so this is, I guess that's almost like weighted as an H2 there. And this is our price, not coming soon, but anyway, that'll be the, the price to be TBC. Chuck that there and class um, let's go text to Excel and see what that looks like it also needs to be bold or medium so it's like tech it's font medium yep and even with this guy here we probably want to do the same either bold or medium Yeah, $29 a month. And then from there we have free trial. So that'll just be a P tag. And that will just be, don't need these fonts yet. So I'm just gonna leave that. So grab that free trial. And then pricing discounts and referrals. What's that say? Pricing discounts and referrals. Let's just grab that there. All right, let's have a look at that. Now we need to justify center and text center. It's actually item center. Um, and then from there, we're going to just set a gap. Too big, maybe two, maybe one. So I really like this um, gap. I've never used that before. I mean, I have recently, but I haven't been using it in the past, but it's actually really nice to work with. Um, all right, so what's next? So we got this. So these are like, a. we also need to set the colors of these because it's like a text gray 100. or even, let's see, 300, probably like a three. Yeah, let's keep it the same as this one above here, right? And then this one here is actually a red, I believe, which it doesn't have. So let's have a look here. Okay, so we probably have to just supply what number we want. Maybe a 500. Something like that. That works for now. Um, okay, sweet. Now we have this little kind of thing and you can see it's got like a little background here. So we need this join the waitlist message. So it's gonna have uh, rounded corners. So we need to do border radius. There's border radius, uh, radius, radius, rounded large. Um, we want the background to be black, but it needs to have an opacity. Is it black? Yeah, it must be black. So it's background, color, black. I must. We'll have to have a look at that because it needs a slight opacity on there, the background opacity. There we go. So let's chuck an opacity of like 80. And then we want some padding. Let's say 16. 
and then we're going to just write here uh, the text. So this will be, where is it? Join the waitlist and get notified when we're ready to launch. Okay. So let's just see padding 16. Let's just change this background to white for a second. It's not the bit background for BG. That's it there. 16 is probably too much. Something like that. Um, I'm just doing the white just so I can see it for now because it is very, it's on black. So it's only where this overlaps on the picture. It doesn't matter. Um, let's see. Yeah, there's 16 in there. So 16 in Tailwind land is four. Four. Perfect. We've got that. All right. So we just need to also center this. Awesome. And we can change this back to black because that's all good. All right. So what we need to do now is add in the font and then these icons. All right. So I'm going to add the custom fonts now. So I just jumped onto Google, found public sounds. We need the regular and the bold. And then from there, I've just selected import and it's given us a little import URL here. So to add that to Tailwind here, we just go bang that in there. And that's grabbing the public sound, so those two weights. And then what we also need inside the design is this open sounds regular. So if we grab open sounds, all right, I'm just gonna remove these. All right, and then we're gonna need just regular for now. All right, and we're gonna just grab that import there. Now I'm just, the reason I'm hesitating here is I'm wondering if we can add these as well and do it all in one import. Yep, it does do that. So let's just do it all in one import then. So now we can grab all of those in one hit. Okay, so hopefully that loads it so it's getting public sands and open sands all right let's give it a spin so now what we want to do here is use that font all right to add this custom font now to tailwind i'm going to go into the tailwind.config.js file in the root down here and then i'm just going to drop in this so we're going to go theme extend font family custom font so this is the first font we want to use is Open Sans. So we're going to go Open Sans. And then looking at Google here, it wants to be Sans Serif and then Open Sans. So we're going to grab that. And then in here, we're going to say Open Sans. Note here that this is in quotes and then a single quote here because that to make it match here because we're putting it into an array. Um, and then we're going to add also public sounds, I believe. Public sounds, yep. And that's going to be public sounds here. Also, I've just noticed we're importing another font we don't need, Questrial. So we don't want Questrial. Let's remove that. And then grab this again. Because we don't need to load things we don't want. Right. All right. Now we should have open sounds. Let's see if that works. So it'll be to use. It'll be text open sounds. Well, it might even be sorry. It might even be font. But let's just. I think it's font. Font open sounds. Let's give that a try. All right. So I've just refreshed the page and done the inspector. You can see open sounds, sounds serif. And if you untick it, you can see it changes the font. So that's pretty cool. So what we probably want to do though is just drop that down one more because it looks like it runs a bit bigger. There we go. And then we can do the same here. So let's see if we change it out of this mode. Make the screen big. We might, I mean, we could probably stay with like a five. Okay. And then we can go leading tight. 
maybe change bump that up a bit so if we go leading or letting we're going to go normal normal tight and not normal doesn't let's just make sure I'm running my server yep doesn't seem to be doing too much there anyway we've got that running and now inside here we're also going to do the same thing we're going to go font this is now public sans you can see that changed a little bit but not that much realistically just enough change that and we could override every you know what we could do instead of doing this every time only where we need it so I'm going to remove it here I'm going to add it to this marketing page main and I'm going to go font public sans now let's just have a look you can now see that we're now rendering public sounds on that one. It's computed, so there we go. We've got public sounds on all those. That just makes it easy. We don't have to add it to every single time. So when we're using headers, we're going to use our open sounds, but otherwise we're going to be using public sounds. Great. All right. Cool. Next thing is the icons. All right, so we noticed the fonts weren't actually loading. Now they are. So the problem was in here this import statement doesn't seem to be working properly so instead I've moved it into the marketing layout I've just grabbed the link so this instead of using import I've used the link here and I've grabbed this code and I've shoved it in the header and now we are loading our fonts and that looks much more similar to this guy so that's awesome the font size still looks different so we've got a 58 there so we do need to just fix this um, text size, font size. 58 is probably a text 6L if we're going to stay true to it. So let's just close these guys. Uh, hero, it's probably a 6XL there. But yeah, it doesn't seem to fit then. So I mean, we have to probably go 5. And then those guys are all there. And then let's have a look if we drop to mobile. Pretty good. Okay, let's do the icons. Okay, so for the, these little icons, what we'll do is we'll export these guys as SVGs. So I'm gonna export, go through the design, export these. Okay, so I've exported those and now inside of images, I'm gonna create a new folder called icons. All right, so I've just dropped the icons in the images. So in the app assets images icons directory. So you can close that off. I'm just mucking around here. Okay, so let's now grab this. So we've got the bolt, you just chuck in the image tag bolt SVG and let's just see what happens. Um, just got to restart. So what is going on here? Oh, so it needs to be icon slash bolt. There we go. There's our bolt. Now we can just chuck a span in here so that we can style these properly. So chuck that in there. Here, here. Okay. And we'll just grab the spans and just wrap all of this text in spans. Okay. Sweet. And now we just got to find out what are the actual pictures. So we've got lightning bolt, calendar. So it's lightning bolt, calendar. Then we've got, is it radio? What is this? TV. TV, and then that's a radio there. Radio, and then the bottom one is clock. So that is going to be here, and this is join the waitlist. 
Wait. All right. Okay, cool. So for mobile view, we can actually left align all of this stuff. So let's turn this into a flex. All right, so we're going to grab this. And then same here. All right, that's cool. And then we are going to, instead of having the text center, we're going to say it's going to be text left and then medium up is text center. All right, so we want something more like this. And then also what we want to do is only center the items when we're medium. All right, because we want to line these up like this. That looks cool. And then we're going to give it a little gap here. Let's go gap one. Two. Maybe even four. Gap four. So we're going to chuck a gap four on all of these guys. Bang. And then down here. All right. We need to fix this up as well. So this is only on medium. Do we go text center? Great. So we want to line these up as well, probably. So we just need to make sure that that goes all the way. Um, so we can go W4, I think. And then set that on all of these guys. All right. For some reason. That's not quite right yet. It could be the padding. And that's what it is. It's the padding. So that's not going to line up actually because there's a black. That's what's tricking me. It's just let me just leave that on there just for now. There we go. Okay. So that those icons won't line up because there is padding on here. But that's okay. So these icons on a hundred percent because they're different widths. So they're creating that weird thing. So what we will have to probably do is get them exported later just on the right, like the same size, just so they look good. Okay. So that's cool. That's all looking pretty good. So what's next on the list? Let's have a look at the subscribe, subscribe button. So this is this little guy here. Okay. That's even here, it's not lined up. So what we want to do is this whole box, right? So that that is just a subscribe box. That comes straight after here. Okay. So this waitlist thing actually lives inside of that. Now. All right. I'm also going to do this BG white. Let's grab all of this. We're actually going to go flex coal here. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to change this to black now. So we can see the two differences. So that's good. And that is rounded in there as well. So we're going to have rounded here. And let's go XL here. All right. And we could probably chuck some padding on here too. Just to show us. There we go. Yep. So that's that padding in there. Join the wait list and get notified. Join the wait list to stay in the loop so we can change that text. So we might even have two here. So we might go like this. So we're going to say hidden and then on medium, we're going to say, um, what's it? Is it block? Let's just have a look. So we want to hide the long text. So it's display hidden. Okay. And then on this one, we want to go, what is the text? It's, stay in the loop. So medium block, we're going to go hidden here. I 
I don't know the syntax this one so I'll just have to check that so that's what we want on mobile let's see if it works on desktop I don't think so I oh, know that join the waitlist and get notified so that's the big one and we'll also align that we actually don't want to go center here anymore Okay, so this is like some sort of gray color. Um, so let's go here. So we're going to go gray. Eight hundred, something like that, right? Sweet. You can barely probably see that on the screen. So there's join the wait list, and then from here we've got this input, right? So we're gonna have an input under here, straight under there. So we're gonna go input class, and that's where we can style this. Um, placeholder will be. Enter an email address. And then down here, we're going to have... So we'll probably wrap this in a form, to be honest. We can probably wrap all of this in a form. And then we're going to go here, input type, submit. And value will be subscribe. Okay. Sweet. Okay, so we can then go and style those guys. Okay, so I'm just styling the subscribe button now. So just create the input type submit, the value subscribe, and then I've just dropped in this inline flex item center, justified center, rounded medium, probably can go large to match this one inside here. Um, text small got font medium which we don't have so we can get rid of that transition colors when we hover so if we go here we've got like a little bit of a transition but that's probably too much of a jump as well so let's just make that go 400 uh, that's too much like that okay so we've got our subscribe button. Let's just check if that's the same kind of size. Um, it's got the font bold. So let's do that. Let's go font bold. Which isn't running for some reason. Maybe if we make it text medium. We just need to get rid of it. It looks like there's a something down the bottom. P, X, P, Y. It's the height. Let's get rid of that. There's some sort of padding underneath here. Better not be last pass. It's this guy. Yeah, last pass is stuffing up our designs. Um, all right. That's cool. So now we need to do this input. I mean, let's let's bump this up again. Actually, text lot. Let's just go. We get rid of that. And p. Let's go p y four as well. Yep, that's cool. Okay. So now we need to do the input. All right. Let's see what that looks like. That's just like a it's got a little border, so it's um, background transparent. Yep, all right, and then we want a border. So let me just format this a little bit better. All right, so we're gonna go border. We wanna go uh, rounded, large, Pretty good. 
I mean, that's pretty close straight away, but let's just make this border slightly different. So we go border, color, let's go border, gray 700. Something like that looks pretty nice. Pretty happy with that, to be honest. Um, awesome. Let's see, what else are we missing here now? All of this other stuff we can come can come later. So I think that's pretty much it. So the only thing that we have to now do is this form. All right, so let's let's set up this form so that we can post and actually store this user. Because I think other than that, that's looking pretty good. Like obviously there can be a background image and a few things, but this, this gives you the basic um, understanding on how to quickly smash out one of these landing pages so that we can get a test an idea before actually building it. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the form. So in here, we've got the form, but we've just coded this uh, hard coded. So we're gonna use the Rails helpers. So I'm gonna duplicate it up here. So what we're gonna say is form for, and then we're gonna say URL, and this is gonna be the path to where we wanna go. And then I'm just gonna end this here. Okay, so that's going to set up our form and then from there, so basically I can drop in all of this stuff and then we're going to be able to have our class up here which will apply to the form so we can grab this there um, and then we're going to say so method will be post which is fine and then we're going to say do and then form here. So just save that out, and then let's jump into our page. So undefined model name. So the URL we need to set here, okay? So we still need to set that. So if we go into our routes here, we're now gonna say, uh, so we wanna have a new route. So it'll be a post route. I might just do marketing here, so it's easier to see. So we're gonna say here, post, um, subscribe to marketing subscribe okay so it'll be the subscribe path so if we now go in here it'll be subscribe path all right i've made a mistake in the routes folder oh yep it's missing that okay so we just undefined method model name so let's have a look at that. Yep, so I've made a mistake. It's not form for, it's form with. Okay, there we go. So now we're on. So you can see we've got exactly the same thing now. But if we have a look inside of this, you can see that we've got our form here and it's got our action subscribe method post. So we can actually get rid of this templating stuff that we did before. And now what we can do is we can change these inputs to be actual fields. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna just drop in this. So we've got four, so we know it's not form, it's f.email field. That's right, and this will be the email. It's required true and it's autofocus here. And then what we can also do is add the class in here. So we'll grab that. And then let's see if we can add a placeholder. There, let's see if this works. There you go. So it's enter an email address. So I just need to grab that. All right, chuck that in there. Sweet, so now we have the enter email address. That's all good. Now we can do the submit button. Okay, so the same thing, f.submit with the title and then we just drop the class in which is matching this. So we can now get rid of this guy. Okay, so now we have a functioning form there. And if we just hit go ken at kenbrief.co and hit subscribe, that will post it to our form. You can see that it's done a post there, no content, all right? So now we can wire up that form on the back end. All right, so let's get started with this form. So 
inside of the marketing controller, we've got the subscribe route now. So we're going to get um, the email, which is this is telling me subscribe job. Yeah, cool. Nah, 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 nah. So a lot of this is we can use. So Param's email, we don't have a subscribe job. So we're going to just have success. And what I'm actually going to do here is um, we need to make sure that the, so there's a flash. So that's fine. But then we want to redirect to the root path and we're going to just say subscribed is true, right? So let's have a look. So this is all this is doing is just going to redirect us back. So let's just give it a spin here. Um, now we need the, f we could probably, I mean, let's just add it a real email. So it's going to be email at email.com subscribe. Uh, I've already appended that here. So we're going to go email at email.com. We're going to hit subscribe. Now you can see we've got a subscribed true here. So we're going to use this parameter in the URL to flip this out here. All right. We're going to change that out to subscribe. Um, thank you for subscribing. So the way we're going to do that here is it's all inside of this form here. So we're going to basically say if params subscribed is equal to true, we're going to do something. Otherwise, so we're going to go else. We're going to render this form. Okay. So I might just indent that there. And it's going to go hello. Okay. So there we go. So we now subscribed. Okay. So now what we can do is actually go in here and pretty much grab the same form that we had before. But now I'm going to, instead of being a form, it's going to just be a div. So we can go div class equals here. It's not a form anymore. Okay, and then the form piece at the end here, we're going to just turn that back into a div. All right, now we can just say thanks for subscribing. And we're going to probably say, please share it with your friends. We'll get rid of that. Um, there's a local there that we don't need. Yeah, we don't need this. Don't need this. Okay. So now it looks like that when you've subscribed. It says, thanks for subscribing. Um, please share with your friends. All right. And we can probably put a break in here just to split this up. Please share with your friends. And we look forward to launching soon. Oh, that might be too much. All right, so if you subscribe, it's just going to flip that out. So if we now go back to this, right, we can say email at email.com, hit subscribe. Thanks for subscribing. Okay, so we've actually done nothing so far, but we are fl flicking this view out. All right. So what we're going to do next is in here, we're going to create a new user using the email. All right, so that's going to look similar to how this works. Um, so the params, email and password. So we're going to just have to see if it allows us to do create a user without a password. So we're going to say use equals user.new and we can say here, this will be subscriber params. Subscribe params. So we check that in private. All right. Um, and then let's just grab this. And all we want is the email. Okay, and then we're going to say if user.save. All right, 
So we're only going to redirect if it's subscribed true. Um, and I don't even need an error there. Otherwise, we're just going to redirect to root path. Yeah. All right. And the error will be an email address because that's all that could really go wrong there. Um, so let's look at this model. Let's just make sure validates password allow nil true. Okay. So we can create that. Let's see if we can now create a user from here. So we'll go back to the root and let me just open the DB. Okay. So in the rails console, we're going to go user dot um, or what? Okay, let's just exit. Um, rail C. User dot all. What? Do we have bcrypt? What are you talking about? Um, bundle. Okay, that's weird. Okay, so we actually have to, I made a mistake in here, so I, I just have to uncomment bcrypt there. I deleted it from the bottom, but I didn't uncomment it at the top there. So let's go rails c user.all none. Okay, so now what we expect is if we go into our app now and sign email at email.com and hit subscribe. Okay, that's again just the bcrypt thing. So we just need to restart our server. All right. All right. So what's wrong here? So there's the email. So we just have to double check why. I think it's going to probably be the password. So let's just grab from this uh, registrations new. Let's just grab this errors piece. And let's chuck it into this hero form here. So we're going to chuck it underneath here. So if we get a user. Okay, so let's just see how they've implemented the sessions or registrations probably. Sorry. So new. So we'll have there, and then we're going to say user is new, and then user save. Otherwise, we're going to render index. All right, we don't need this flash message. Okay, so that's what we look like now. Okay, so we're going to go email at email.com, subscribe, password can't be blank. Okay, so we need to just fix that. We do want to allow you to create an account without a password. And a, and a simple way is we could just literally create a password for them. That would be if we struggle too much, I'll probably just do that. So allow nil true. So we just want to see here. So why? Can't it be nil? It's probably because it's on the DB. When we created this user, it can't be null. So, okay, so that's the problem there. So, to just to get around that for now, what we're going to do here is we're going to go user dot um, attributes and we're going to say password and we're going to just generate one. Okay, so we'll just generate a random password. Um, Yep, secure random. All right, and then we're going to just use that. And this is just a temporary password. So it doesn't actually matter what technically what it is because no one's going to use that. So let's give that a little spin. So refresh, and then we're going to go email at email.com. Subscribe. All right. Name. All right, so the name looks like we created the name as well. Not false. So I'm going to roll this uh, migration back. I actually want to allow 
that to be to be false. Uh, yeah, because I don't think we want to collect people's names right in the beginning. All right, so to redo this migration, um, I'm going to grab ID here, which is the time, date timestamp. And then we're going to run Rails DB migrate redo version equals, and that'll be the version there. So then all we're going to do here is is null true. It can be it can be the name can be null. All right. So then just re, let's run that. Redo is going to roll roll back and then redo. So what's it saying? Other objects depend on it. All right. So let's just roll back everything. Sorry, Rails DB roll back roll back twice. So we couldn't do that because the session relies on the user and it's a foreign key. So for now, we'll just do that. And then we're just going to run Rails DB migrate. Okay, now we should be able to create that user because the name is null true. Let's give that a spin. I need to start the server before I do. All right. Refresh email at email.com. Subscribe. There we go. Thanks for subscribing. All right, you can see here it ran the insert. And it gave it a random password. And we can't even see what that is, so that's great. There's our user. And if we go user.password digest, um, oh, use it off first. There it is, it's encrypted. No one can see it, no one can touch it. All right, let's give that a spin. So you can see here, if we go to the home page, um, and now we're going to create a new user. So it'll be Ken at email.com. Hit subscribe. Subscribe true. Thanks for subscribing. And if we jump into now, we go user dot last Ken at email.com. And then we can also have a look here. We've created a password for them, which is encrypted. No one can read it. So that's all good. So we're ready to go. So that's it. So we've created a landing page now. Um, we haven't had to use a separate tool. So we're collecting all these emails. They will now live in our database. So we can then use them to, once we've built this app out, we can actually market to them and say, hey, look, it's ready to go. And we can e easily let them sign in because we have them stored as a user. We just have to get them basically to reset their password and confirm their email. And they're ready to use our app. So hopefully you enjoyed that one and this will be the beginning of a great project. Catch you on the next one.